most of us are just interested in enjoyers of music. People get to kind of have leeway with what genres that they're putting out, like from a week to week basis. Like I like to play like Latin music a lot. Uh, between like rap, pop, weird electronic music, you're yeah. trying to just cover all of it. The co-station manager Luke has a talk show, yeah. no music. Yeah. They'll just answer questions and talk oh, to cool. each other and it's really entertaining. Yeah. There seems to be a lot of interest from like the student band community in getting their stuff on the radio. There's right. a large pool of talent at Bowdoin yeah. yeah. deserves a, an outlet that more white can be more widely accessed by the public. We do have limited listening data through our online stream. As a non-commercial station, we're not driven by those numbers to change how we program, which I think is what helps us stand out in mm -hmm. the landscape of stations that are out there. And we got people on the radio early in the semester. Yeah. We were really quick with getting people trained, so it was like hit the ground running at the beginning yeah. of the semester so people could have their shows and I think a lot of people started engaging their friends with it and their friends will all listen in pretty religiously so mm -hmm. I think it kind of made campus radio cool. I think a large element too that often goes understated is the space itself mm -hmm. and the draw that it has um, in terms of assembling the creative type um, in one place and it is kind of in a sense a space that you can come to for comfort and that we have almost full control over how we present the space and design it and there's not that level of ownership anywhere else around campus. 